when running a software business or really any online business with a lot of customers, customer support costs and teams are going to grow exponentially over time as you scale. Now we actually have our own software and because of this, we have a unique position to understand this situation and we have built out a ton of customer support agents for our clients. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can reduce your customer support inquiries by 60 to 70% by implementing a customer support AI agent inside of your business. I'm going to provide you with the full template, show you how to set it up, explain how it works. And by the end of this video, you will have this fully functional. So let's get right into it. All right. So this customer support agent, which I'm going to be showing you is the shell of what you need in order to make sure that you are able to catch 60 to 70% of customer support inquiries. Now, before I go into the template, show you how it works, how to set it up and more, let's just walk through the power of AI customer support. As I already mentioned, it handles about 60 to 70% of incoming customer support requests. Really, the goal of an AI is to be the middleman between the customer and the actual customer support team. A lot of customers come with repetitive inquiries. They come with the same questions over and over again across the board. And 60 to 70% of these can be answered straight away without a human having to ever interact with that. And that is a statistic that we have seen across the board with the clients who we have serviced with this solution. Now, when it can't have a request, the AI can actually open a ticket for the customer and forward that issue to a human representative on your team so that the customer experience doesn't lose quality. So if the solution can't be found by the AI, a human can jump in. And at the end of the day, you have happier customers because they get fast responses to basic questions and they get help quickly and less customer support agents, which means more profits for you and less customer support costs. Now, how did I build this SaaS AI customer support agent? We are using VoiceFlow in order to set this up. You can sign up in the link below in the description if you haven't done so yet. It's super simple, it's very affordable, and you will be provided with the template to do all of this anyways. Now, first things first, I'm gonna walk you through the template and logic, but before I do, I just wanna mention that the entire template, as well as a lot more resources in the space of AI, outreach, sales, and closing can be found in our school community at school.com slash Omnifusion. It's completely free, and the template which I'm about to show you can be found over there. Now, once you've signed up to VoiceFlow, the professional plan should be more than enough. All you need to do is log in and then click up here to import a .vf file. Once you've gotten the file from the school community under the classroom tab, let me actually show you guys real quick. So once you're inside the community, just navigate to the classroom tab and in here at the bottom, you're going to find a course for this specific video. In there, you're going to find the .vf file, which you can then go ahead and import up here. Once you've done that, this right here is going to open up and it might look a little bit overwhelming to start off with, but I'll walk you guys through it and you might not even need the full setup. Now, essentially what happens over here is a conversation gets started and let me actually show you guys the functionality that we have over here. We are able to answer questions. We're able to open tickets. We're able to take enterprise requests and we're able to submit feature requests. Now I'm just going to show you guys a quick demo before I walk you through roughly what this does and what you need to adjust if you're using this on, on our end. Now, if I say I want to cancel my subscription. This is going to be a good demo to see how fast a reply comes. And this is obviously going to make customers very happy if they get a reply at this speed. Now, right now it's just simply taking everything, compiling the, the answer, formatting it in a nice way. And we have the link right here to cancel. We have a nice question and we always give the user the option to open a ticket if they want to. Now, for example, if I say I want an enterprise plan, it is going to recognize out of conversation that I want an enterprise plan, jump down to this section in the bottom, and it's going to ask how many seats do I want? Um, it's going to ask me how, if I want to contact our sales team, I can either click the button and say contact sales or I can say, yes, please let's contact the or I can just say, let's please. And the AI is obviously going to be smart enough to recognize that I want to proceed. I want 50 seats. Now all I, need, all I need to do is provide the email and it's going to be done. So let me walk you guys through how this works. 
So at the start of the conversation, we have the welcome. Also, quick side note, the foundation of this was actually a German project that we did. So if it says German words like willkommen, uh, please just go ahead and ignore that. But basically, we say welcome to the support. You can go ahead and click on it, adjust the text card right here. We then capture the user reply and we then check out their intent. So we have a couple different intents such as normal question, technical issue, cancel subscription, open ticket, enterprise, feature request, and you can adjust these right here. So essentially you're gonna have to adjust the prompt. If you only want to do normal question answering, then only this part up here is gonna be relevant for you. All of this down here is not gonna be relevant unless you wanna open tickets, then this right here is relevant too. The enterprise and feature request is really just an additional bonus, which I wanted to throw in there. Then basically all of these things, such as in this case, normal question is hooked up to up here. We're then gonna see again with an intent recognition card and all of this is maybe a little bit technical jargon. I'm just gonna explain it once anyways. We're gonna see if the user is actually asking a question or if the user is not asking a question. And we then go down different paths Based on that, we check the memory, we rewrite it, we we get the response from the from the knowledge base right here. We then go ahead and format the answer, run some JavaScript to make sure it's clean and there's no uh, quotation marks after formatting it. And then we go ahead and send out the reply. We either just say the reply or for example, if they said thanks, we're gonna say you're welcome. If I can help you with anything else, let me know. If we're unable to answer and we have a no match, so there was no answer found, we're gonna say, seems like our AI can't help you resolve this issue. Please contact our support here by clicking on open ticket, which then has the button open ticket, which takes them down to this node right here open ticket start. If we just have the response, we're just gonna provide the response and also give them the option to open a ticket. It's too complicated for me to explain in this video, but it's all set up for you already. All you really need to do is go over here into this one right here, the set AI knowledge base response new, this one, this one, this one and this one and adjust the prompt right here. For example, auto IGDM, you're gonna wanna replace it with your specific company click over here go to the content and when you're in the content all you need to going to do is go to knowledge and up here click on these three wheels here you're going to have your system prompt which you're going to have to adjust quite a few things in here for example here we mentioned auto igdm we give some context on what it is here again we mentioned auto igdm and in general there's just a couple things right here that we specify so feel free to adjust this prompt right here as well. And in this case, we are using GPT 3.5 Turbo. If you wanna use GPT 4 Turbo, it's obviously gonna be more expensive, but also much better. Now, before we walk into walk through how to give knowledge to this AI, I just wanna wrap up this here real quick and keep on showing you some, some stuff over here. So as I said, just adjust this, this, this and this right here. Apart from that, you also need to adjust the intent recognition. Once you've adjusted the intent recognition, added some different intents over here, where you're gonna have to do is go to the conditions right here and adjust them accordingly. If you don't know how conditions work, basically a normal question, we're saying right here with this intent recognition, we're saving into a variable intent recognition, the intent that the user had. And then if the variable matches normal question, we go down a specific path. If you wanna, for example, only answer questions and open tickets, you can just remove all of these down here and just drop them to remove them. Uh, basically what you would need is only the normal question and open ticket and everything else you can remove. Now down here for the open ticket flow, again, might look a little bit overwhelming for you guys right now, but essentially all that happens is I'm happy to submit a ticket. They ask for an email. We capture an email. We say, thank you. I've prepared the following ticket. It then summarizes the conversation, creates the ticket information, asks the user if you would like to submit the ticket, adjust it, change the email, or cancel his request. And if he clicks on submit ticket, it submits the ticket, it stringifies it, which again, technical jargon, you guys don't need to know what it, what it does. Basically here, you do need to know what that does. This is an API request, which if you wanna open tickets, you're gonna have to adjust this depending on what you use. If you use intercom, if you use Zendesk, whatever the case may be, you're gonna have to make an API request specifically to your ticketing system. And they all have great documentation on that as well. So that shouldn't be too hard for you to figure out and set up or just hire someone to do it for you. And then you simply submit the ticket. It's gonna tell the person that the ticket has been submitted and move on. For an enterprise request, in this case, we ask them if they wanna contact the sales team. We ask them how many seats they want, ask them for an email. We then ask, finalize the request. 
we ask them if they want to submit it and if they do want to submit it once again we're going to have a post request which is going to go into wherever we want to save this enterprise application and the same thing happens for future requests uh, thank you for submitting a future request can you please send me your email we capture the email and we then go ahead and once again post it somewhere and this right here is basically if they suggest a feature in conversation so if they say in conversation and this is again uh, done in this prompt right here the user is asking for a feature to be implemented that means he already suggested the feature and right and down here we're going to save that in this request we're going to want to pass along the memory of the user so that we are able to actually see what requests they have but really these two down here are just a bonus if you have a software and you have a lot of feature requests or you have a lot of enterprise applications you can leave that if not as i said remove it from the intent recognition and remove it down here and you're going to be good to go and that is basically the setup now let's quickly walk through how to set up a knowledge base so once again if you go over here to content and click on knowledge you can see that i uploaded a couple files in here uh, we never actually ended up taking it live but there's a couple test files in here um, we have support documentation and just in general faqs guides anything that you have which you probably already have on the faq page of your of your website or somewhere else you just go ahead and take that information and you can summarize it into a simple docx document so a simple microsoft word document put all the information in there you can even put it in a question answer format so question how much does it cost answer it costs x amount and then just go ahead and upload those files here and the ai will pull its knowledge from there so now we've basically walked through a lot of these steps you have voice flow you got the template from the community you customize the template the prompts and the logic if needed you added a knowledge base and now we just need to complete and test the setup so essentially what you need to do in order to wrap this up is when you're on this designer canvas you just go ahead and hit publish go ahead and click publish which is going to make this public and something important that you're going to have to do is go to integration and here on web chat you're going to be able to configure the name the description you're going to be able to let it have memory so let's say somebody's on the website having a conversation with the chatbot but then they leave come back a day later reload the website you want it to forget or never forget in this case i have it set up to forget you have the icons where you can add your logos and then you have this code which you simply paste into the body tag of any page on your website that you want this widget to appear and ta-da you have your own ai customer support agent now if you want to implement this into social media so you want to deploy it into social media you can do so via many chat and actually if you go into our school community in the classroom click on resource sub classroom go into the resource sub scroll down and under voice flow integrations you're going to find full template connect voice flow with instagram dms and facebook and you're going to be able to watch this video get the templates over here and then actually go ahead and hook up your ai agent with your instagram account facebook page whatsapp telegram or much more if you want to deploy your AI customer support agent on social media. And that is how you can set up your own AI customer support agent. I hope you found some value in this video. As I said, the template and all resources mentioned in this video are available in our free community at school.com slash Omnifusion. And if you want this done for you professionally by us and our team, feel free to visit our website at Omnifusion.ai and go ahead and book a call or you can find the link to the website down below in the description. I look forward to speaking with you and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.